southern Spain. It's known all over the world for its sandy beaches, tourism, tapas and flamenco guitar. But 700 years ago, this was the front line of an Islamic empire that stretched across Europe, Africa and the Middle East. It was a centre of learning, of science and medicine. And it was the final frontier for eight centuries of brutal battles between Muslim and Christian armies. Today they call it Andalusia. Back then it was known as El Andalus. Against this backdrop, a young Muslim lawyer named Ibn Battuta left his home in Tangier. He was to travel 73,000 miles in 30 years through 40 countries and become the greatest explorer of his age. He stayed in lavish palaces, met great men and fought fierce battles. How do we know this? Because he wrote it all down in an epic travelogue that's become one of the most important portrayals of medieval life. It was called The Journey. Seven centuries later, I've come on a journey of my own to follow in Ibn Battuta's footsteps and see for myself the influence he's had on the modern world. I'll be following the route of one of his most important journeys when he left his home in Morocco to defend Al-Andalus from Spanish invaders. And I'll meet the people who've dedicated their lives to finding out more about Ibn Battuta's legacy. What Ibn Battuta has left us is a universal view of the world. He perceived it as something united that could be understood through travel. It was a pioneering voyage, and he was an exceptional person. He wanted to explore places that were completely unknown to his world, and he succeeded. Spain hasn't been under Muslim rule since 1492. But in one small Spanish town, the great battles between Christian and Muslim armies are still being fought. For the last 14 years, the town of Consuegra has reenacted a battle which took place in 1097 between the Muslim troops of Yusuf ibn Tashfin and the Castilian king Alfonso VI. We act out the battle from both sides. The Castilians are up there in the castle and the Muslim troops are down here in the camp. During these turbulent times, you didn't last long unless you knew how to handle a weapon. Even academics and lawyers like Ibn Battuta were trained in swordplay. So I've asked David from the Muslim army to teach me how to defend myself, medieval style. The thing about sword fighting pretty much has to do a lot with moving your feet, so it's not as simple as just moving your arms, so it's almost like a, a dance mm -hmm. in a way. Dance with the sword, right? So if you want to do like a slice somebody's neck off, you would put your left foot forward and aim for the neck. I don't want to do that because I think I will hit your neck. <laughs> now if I want to stop it, go ahead. I'll be defending, at the same time I'm also moving my feet backwards. You want to charge again for my neck, you move your right foot forward and I stop again. If you want to stop a blow to your head, you have your sword like this, you would step backwards, okay? Okay. So let's imagine I'm going to You're going to blow chop my to your head, head off? Right, okay, I'm ready. Okay. As soon as one guy misses, the other guy has to be able to stop the blow. Yeah, so you've always got to be on your If I throw my blow and you don't stop it, it can just, you know, slice your head open. <laughs> Which is not It's not too great. For these reenactors, their craft is their profession. One false move could have deadly consequences. And yes, those swords are as sharp as they look. Um. 
Based on this training session, I can't imagine I'd last long on the front lines of Al Andalus. Countless men died trying to redraw the borders of Muslim Spain. And even Ibn Battuta took up arms to try and defend Al Andalus. Well, the weekend's warring only lasted a couple of days and, of course, ends in true Spanish fiesta style. But when Ibn Battuta volunteered to defend Gibraltar against the encroaching Christian forces, he was signing up to take part in a bloody war that had raged for hundreds of years. But why would a Moroccan lawyer sign up to defend Gibraltar? And what's all this got to do with his book, The Journey? To find out, I decided to start at the beginning. Tangier, Ibn Battuta's birthplace. 